got a nice little plow plane uh, here that I'm going to restore today. Um, beautiful, beautiful little plane. Uh, but before I do, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what plow planes are for, um, what they are, how they work, and a couple things that they can be used for. This is Working Wooden Planes. I'm Abraham. I take antique planes and get them back into working condition. So I'm going to use this uh, Sandusky as a demo. Um, 119 it was one of the more basic models. Um, it's in fantastic condition, uh, but somebody cleaned up the metal components on it. Not I didn't do this. Um, they just went to town on them. They really wanted them to look brand new. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more in a bit about how risky that can be. Um, so plot planes had a, a simple task, a simple purpose, and that's just to cut a groove um, in the face of a board. Um, the groove is used for joints, um, pretty common use is for uh, door bottoms. Um, but there's two other things that they can do as well. Um, and one of them is you can use that groove to set up um, long rip cuts. Um, if you're going to rip um, a board by hand, um, that can be pretty handy. Um, and you can also use them to make a rabbit. If you push the fence all the way up against the iron, um, so it's flush against the iron, you can cut a rabbit that's the width of the iron itself. So it's kind of a complicated tool for such a simple task of cutting a groove. Um, and that was intentionally so. Um, you could accomplish this cutting a groove with something that was much more basic. Um, plow planes were a way for plane makers to show off um, their craftsmanship. Uh, so over the course of the 1800s, they got more and more ornate. Um, they had the really high-end ones had this center wheel up against the body that you would use when making really minute adjustments to the fence. Um, they used really exotic materials. They used, you know, ebony for the body and uh, ivory on the end caps for the fence arms. Um, and because of that, the cost for these was fairly high. They were pretty expensive back then and remain so today. Um, if you want a decent user um, that's in good condition, you're going to start, it's going to start at around $100 on eBay um, at least and go up from there. The ones that are rare, um, that are collector's items, go into the tens of thousands of dollars, tens of tens of thousands of dollars. I think the record that one of these fetched at an auction was over $100,000. Um, so they are uh, highly desirable and, uh, and can be very expensive and as collector's items can be worth a ton of money. Uh, and because of that, uh, I take a very conservative approach when it comes to restoring plow planes. Let's do a quick rundown of the parts of the, of the plow plane. Um, they have a that depth adjuster, um, and then on the top, uh, they have a screw that you can that moves the depth adjuster up and down. And then they have that locking screw on the side of the body, holds it in place. Um, on the other side, they have the um, those skates, um, also called um, sole plates, um, and that is what touches the wood. Um, that also helps hold the iron in place. Um, then you have the fence. You have the fence and the fence arms. Um, those fence arms can either be screw arms like this one, um, or they can be um, they can be held in place by a wedge instead. Um, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. Um, and then you have the uh, the wooden nuts as well um, that hold the fence firm up against the body. Most planes came with eight uh, irons. Um, they all have that groove on the back, which uh, sits up against the skate, and the skate holds the iron centered um, in the plane. Um, the irons were numbered one through eight. Number one was an eighth of an inch. Number eight was five eighths of an inch. Um, it is pretty uncommon to be able to find a complete set by uh, an individual um, iron maker. Um, this is a Harlequin set. It's uh, each of the irons was made by different um, by a different maker. Um, original sets by one by one maker are pretty pricey. 
So when is a plow plane not a plow plane? Uh, just because it has an adjustable fence doesn't mean it's a plow plane. This is a sash filister from 1822, so almost 200 years old. Um, it's used for cutting window sashes, um, and it has an adjustable fence that's held in place with wedges. It's not a screw arm. Um, it's got a depth stop, but as you can see, it's got a rabbit iron in there, um, so it's not used for cutting grooves. Uh, this other one is your is just a, a filister, a um, little bit more high end, you know, a lot of a little bit more brass all over it, um, and it's got a depth stop again. And this one's got a nicker for cutting cross grain, but it's not for cutting grooves; it's for cutting rabbits. So there's no maker's mark on this plane, um, so I don't know how old it is. Um, but like I said, great condition. Um, it's not missing any of its of the threads on the um, screw arms, which is a really common problem with these. Um, it's all the parts appear to be original. Um, really good looking plane. Uh, the like I mentioned, I take a very conservative approach when it comes to cleaning um, plow planes. There's the uh, an owner's mark on there. Isn't that beautiful? So yeah, so I take a very conservative approach when it comes to cleaning plow planes. Um, their scarcity and the cost and the possibility that it might be a collector's item means you really should have a hands-off approach um, to these. Um, and then there's also an aesthetic element to that decision. <clears throat> Excuse me. You should never take the metal parts off of a plow plane. Um, although I'll break that rule later on in this video, but you really should never do it. And if, uh, if so they're going to remain, if you can't take them off and clean them, they're going to remain heavily patinaed. And so if you scrub the body until it's shiny bright, uh, it's going to look really weird. Um, with the darker patinaed metal um, parts. So why do I say that you should never take the metal parts off? Um, and the, the reason is, is because they're, they're not made to come off. Um, and so the likelihood of you breaking one of the screws that holds either the depth adjuster screw um, or the skates, you know, the likelihood of you breaking one of those screws is really high. Um, or if they're brass, which they often are, the likelihood of you stripping them, um, stripping the heads is really high as well. Uh, if you break the screw, you're, you're screwed. Um, the, the, that's that part, whether it's the depth adjuster screw or the fence is gonna be loose now and it's no longer a user. Um, if you strip them, they're just gonna, it's just gonna look like crap um, and you're gonna destroy the look of the plane. Um, with this plane, um, the, as I took it apart, um, I discovered that the screws that hold in the, the depth, um, stop adjuster were loose. And so I made a little gamble and decided to try and unscrew them and successfully did so. Um, so it can be done. Um, it's just pretty risky. So you have to decide whether it should be done. So let's make this plane usable. Um, the first thing you want to check is that the fence itself is flat. Uh, and this needs to be flat because it's pressed up against the edge of your of your workpiece. Um, you know, as the wood contracts and expands over the years and the decades um, or the centuries, depending on how old it is, um, it's not uncommon for it to have high and low spots. Um, this one miraculously does not. It is completely flat. It's really easy to fix. Um, you just take a block plane and knock down the high points. Um, so a real easy fix if, it, if there is an issue there. Um, the next thing is to look at the body itself. Um, the, where the, you don't need to worry about where the depth stop is because the depth stop touches the wood, not the, the, the area before and behind it. Um, but the next thing you need to check are the skates. Um, skates are really important that they're both in alignment um, and that they're completely flat. So you can see here, there's a lot of, there's a big gap um, right in the middle. Um, so we're gonna have to flatten 
the the um, we're gonna have to flatten the skates um, because those are what touch the wood. The next thing you want to check, and this is super critical, is that the skates are in perfect alignment with one another. Um, if they're not, this is um, the plane is not going to uh, your grooves are not going to be um, uh, straight, and so making sure that the that these are in uh, total alignment is critical. If they're not, the only way to fix it is to take the skates off, which I already said was a big no-no, um, and to to use a plane or a chisel or something else to um, flatten the face that the t uh, the that the um, that the skates attach to, um, because of the risk of taking off the the skates, I would highly suggest if you are looking at a plane to buy and they, the skates are out of alignment that you just don't get it. Um, it's not worth the risk. Even if the rest of the plane is in perfect condition, if you really want it to be a user, these need to be perfectly aligned. And luckily they are for this plane, uh, which is one of the reasons I got it. Um, and so yeah, pretty, pretty straight ahead. Clear the plane. Um, I'm just going to use paste wax. Um, just rub it on with a um, some synthet synthetic steel wool, um, super fine, um, triple zero, and just scrub some of the grime and dirt off, um, and leave the patina uh, as is. Um, then wipe it all off with a rag and call it good. Uh, and that's really the extent of it. So it may not look like we've done much, um, but you can see from the rag just how much dirt um, and gunk we've taken off um, of the plane. That was a totally clean rag when I started.
Now we want to flatten the uh, skates. Um, so just going to use some heavy grit um, sandpaper on a flat surface using the ceramic tile. Um, pretty straight ahead. So sharpening the iron is super simple. Um, this doesn't have to be razor sharp. Um, you're taking a pretty deep cut with it. Um, so it doesn't have to be um, super, super sharp like you would with like a smoothing plane iron. Um, and because the bevel is so big, it's really easy to hold it in place with just your finger. You don't need a guide. It wouldn't really fit on a, with, a, with a, a guide anyways. Uh, so I'll use 300 for a minute or so, and then switch to 100. Uh, stropped it, and it was good to go. So let's put it all together and use it now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So to first thing you want to do is to set the um, width of the how. Um, how far in from the edge of the of your the edge of your board that you want to cut your groove? Um, remember, you can't just um, set the skates at the, uh, the 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 space between the skates and the fence is not the actual width. the The iron extends past the edge of the skate a little bit, so first you need to measure the that distance, and then based on that distance, then you're going to measure your the width of the skate and the, uh, and the fence, um, if that makes any sense. Um, so here we're looking at about a half inch for the, between the fence and the iron, which will be the, the distance the groove is from the edge of the board. And then we're gonna wanna adjust the fence and the skates a little bit wider than that. So, and when we like it, we just tighten those screws down, or excuse me, tighten the nuts down. Next thing that needs to happen is to adjust the, the um, depth stop. Um, again, really simple. You're just you're measuring off the, the base of the skate because that's what touches the wood to the bottom of the uh, depth stop. I think I did a, um, how deep did I go? I think it went like a quarter of an inch. It's kind of hard to tell there because the plane is tilted away from the camera. And then setting the iron, um, again, is really simple. That groove goes up against the uh, skate um, it holds the iron, like I said, centered um, on the skate uh, and you're just going to want to extend it just right up flush with the skate and then use a mallet um, to tap your wedge into place and to tap and to, <clears throat> excuse me, to advance the um, iron. It needs to be advanced just a little bit farther. Keep that wedge firm.
kind of knot right at the end of that board, but this iron is nice and sharp, so it chops right through it. And you're gonna start at the front, um, and as that goes deep enough, um, then you will scoot back um, and keep scooting back until you reach the other end of the board. You want your left hand, this is if you're right-handed, you want your left hand pressing the fence up against the face of the board. Um, you're not really pushing with, the, with that left hand, you're pushing just with your right hand, and then the fence, and then your, hand, your left hand is your fence hand. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I think it's a beautiful little user. Um, I think it looks fantastic. Um, I think that it's um, didn't overclean it, didn't didn't uh, wreck it by uh, messing with too many of the the brass screws, um, and ended up with a really nice little user, um, beautiful little plane. Hope the video um, was useful for you cleaning up and restoring your own your own plow plane. Um, they're, like I said, they're handy. Um, I, I actually use them not really for joints, but for, um, for doing those long rib cuts. I find that they're really handy. Um, so anyways, thanks for watching and goodbye.